This presentation is on osteosarcoma by Leah Erickson and David Seeger. Osteosarcoma is a malignant bone tumor of mesenchymal origin. It accounts for 20% of all bone cancers. While typically it is found in long bones, it can be found in the jaws and the face. Only 7% of osteosarcomas can manifest in the jaws, and most commonly it is found in the mandible. It is considered idiopathic, while there have been viral and genetic causes that have been suggested. In the current slide, you can see that osteosarcoma is often characterized by a production of unmineralized bone by the malignant cells. Clinical findings. Osteosarcoma nearly always presents with swelling, usually bony hard, in addition to trismus, erythematous mucosa, submandibular lymph node involvement, and mucosal ulceration may be seen late stage. It typically manifests as a painful enlarging mass and pathologic fracture may be the first sign, especially when affecting long bones. Clinical symptoms including pain, paresthesia, loose teeth, ill-fitting dentures, facial asymmetry have all been reported. It can also cause epistaxis, nasal obstruction, and possibly blindness. The distribution of osteosarcoma is considered to have equal distribution between sexes and some studies suggest it is more common between men than women. 2,000 cases are reported annually in the United States with an average age of occurrence around 35. In contrast to incidents within the long bones of the body, osteosarcoma of the jaws occur at an older age in skeletally mature patients and typically peaks 10 to 20 years following adolescence, so the mean age of 34 to 36 years. It also presents differently clinically than osteosarcoma found in long bones. These are the radiographic findings of osteosarcoma. Location. Osteosarcoma is most commonly found in the mandible, especially in the body, symphysis, and mandibular angle. Less commonly, osteosarcoma may present in the maxilla, with typical sites including the alveolar ridge and maxillary sinus. In either jaw, the lesion may be seen crossing the midline, so while it is typically unilateral, this is not always the case. Edge. Osteosarcoma is typically ill-defined or with diffuse borders. Shape. It's typically seen as a round ovoid structure. Internal structure. The lesion can be seen with a radiolucent, radiopaque, or a mixed radiolucent, radiopaque appearance. The area may also present radiographically with a speculated sun ray appearance due to the deposition of bone radiating out from the cortex. This can be seen in the radiograph on this slide. Other structures. Depending on the size and location of the tumor, it is likely to see a displacement of the adjacent cortical bone as well as a widening of the periodontal ligament space of adjacent teeth and widening and possible displacement of the inferior alveolar nerve canal. For maxillary lesions, the cortical boundaries of the antrum or nasal cavity may also be displaced or lost. Number. Osteosarcoma is almost exclusively a singular lesion. Size. Osteosarcoma varies greatly in the size. Hmm. Differential interpretation. Chondrosarcoma. This condition is included as a differential diagnosis because it is a malignant tumor that can occur within the bones of the head and neck region. It presents radiographically similar to osteosarcoma, often indistinguishable if osseous structure is visible in osteosarcoma. Typically, calcifications associated with chondrosarcoma do not appear in osteosarcoma. In this radiograph, of an axial scan of the patient, you can see an enlargement of the left condyle. Fibrosarcoma. This entity is also a malignant tumor that can be found in the jaws, specifically the mandible. Its radiographic appearance is very similar to osteosarcoma, possibly showing sunray spicules or Codman's triangle. This is a triangular shadow where the periosteum has been lifted away from the cortex. Also, fibrosarcoma can present with pain and enlargement of bone, much like osteosarcoma. Its internal structure is minimal or absent, so it can be a distinguishing feature if 
Osteosarcoma displays any internal radial opacities. In this pantomograph, a fibrosarcoma involving the right maxillary sinus has destroyed the cortical boundaries of the sinus, zygomatic process, hard palate, posterior maxilla, and alveolar process. Metastatic carcinoma. The radiographic presentation of this third malignancy is much like osteosarcoma, with an ill-defined border and a tendency to cause enlargement of bone. Widening of the periodontal ligament seen in osteosarcoma is in contrast irregular and extends up the side of the root in metastatic carcinoma. Additionally, metastatic carcinoma can be distinguished by the presence of a primary malignancy at a distant site. In this section of a pantomograph, a metastatic breast carcinoma surrounding the apical half of the second and third molar roots and extending inferiorly has destroyed the inferior border of the mandible. While osteosarcoma can display some variation in its radiographic features, specifically related to its internal structure, histologically it must present with production of mineralized or unmineralized bone, which is osteoid, by malignant cells. This is essential for diagnosis. This feature can be evaluated through excisional biopsy. Treatment options include surgical resection of the tumor, adjunctive chemotherapy, and radiation treatments. Hemimandibulectomy is preferred in the mandible, while maxillectomy is difficult due to the presence of surrounding structures. A subtotal inferior maxillectomy may be utilized in lesions affecting the floor of the antrum or alveolar ridge. Surgical resection is the preferred method of treatment as it would limit the number of structures affected. A referral to a medical oncologist would be appropriate. This professional would be experienced with cancers, cancer patients, and the complications of a metastatic tumor, also complications that may reach beyond the scope of dentistry. These are the key points of osteosarcoma. Clinically, osteosarcoma presents with bony hard swelling especially in the posterior mandibular region where the tumor is most common. The patient may be complaining of pain and or paresthesia in the area, loose teeth, or facial asymmetry. They may also show signs of limited ability to open and reddened intraoral mucosa in the area of the swelling. Radiographically, osteosarcoma is most often seen in the posterior mandible, specifically the angle and tooth-bearing area, but has also been known to be found in the alveolar ridge and maxillary sinus. Its borders are typically ill-defined and it takes on a round ovoid shape. While not pathognomonic of osteosarcoma, the lesion may show a sun ray appearance due to the involvement of cortical periosteum. Depending on the size and location of the malignant tumor, there may be displacement of adjacent cortical bone, widening of the periodontal ligament, as well as enlargement or displacement of the inferior alveolar nerve canal if the lesion resides in the mandible. The best treatment options for osteosarcoma of the jaw may depend on its exact location and the surrounding structures. However, at this time, the best treatment option includes complete surgical resection of the bony tumor, with the margins of the resection extending beyond the clinical and radiographic edges of the lesion. This treatment provides the best and most reliable outcome with complete removal of the treatment of the tumor, but also limits the number of side effects the patient may experience with use of adjunctive radiation and chemotherapeutic modalities.